Oh, hello, great readers. I'm Bill Chen. I'm Nima Kung. I'm Ben Chen. In this class, I'll read to all of you. Sec 3 of A Tale of Two Cities, Book the Second Golden Thread. S. Oh. A Tale of Two Cities, Book the Second Golden Thread. Charles Dickens. Sec 3. That depends. I may find a use for it one day. If I dial, said madam, drawing a breath and nodding her head with a stern kind of coquetry. It was remarkable. What? Headdress of Madame Defarge. Two men had entered separately and had been about to order a drink. And catching sight of that novelty, they fought made a pretense of looking about as if for some friend who was not there and went away. Moral of those who had been there when this visitor entered was there one left. They had all dropped off. The spy had kept his eyes open but had been able to detect no sign. They had landed away in a poverty stricken Purposeless. Accidental manner. Quite natural and unimpeachable. John thought, Madam. Shaking off her work as her fingers knitted. And her eyes looked at the stranger. Stay long enough. You have a husband. Business is very bad. I'll. The unfortunate, miserable people, so oppressed. As you say, Madam retorted, correcting him, and deftly knitting an extra something into his name that bought him no good. Pardon me. Certainly it was I who said so. But you naturally think so. I think, returned madam, in a high voice, I and my husband have enough to do to keep this wine shop open, without thinking, all we think, here, is how to live, that is the subject we think of, and it gives us, for morning to night, enough to think about without embarrassing our heads concerning others I think for others well the spy who was there to pick up any crumbs he could find or make did not allow his baffled state to express itself in his sinister face but stood with an air of gossiping gallantry leaning his elbow on Madame Defarge's little counter and occasionally sipping his cognac. A bad business this. Bad out. Of Gaspard's execution. Ah. Oh. The poor Gaspard, with a sigh of great compassion. My faith returned Madame. Coolly and lightly. If people use knives for such purposes, they have to pay for it. He knew beforehand what the price of his luxury was. I believe, said the spy, dropping his soft voice to tone that invited confidence and expressing an injured revolutionary susceptibility in every muscle of his good face. I believe there is much compassion and anger in this neighborhood. Touching the poor fellow? Is there us, madam? Beckonly. Here is my husband, said Madame Defarge, as the keeper of the wine shop entered at the door. The spy saluted him by touching his hat and saying, 
with an engaging smile. Good day. Tack. Defarge stopped short. And stared at him. Good day. Tack. The spy repeated. With not quite so much confidence. Or quite so easy a smile under the stare. You deceive yourself. Monsieur returned the keeper of the wine shop. You mistake me for another. That is not my name. It is all the same, said the spy. Arley. But discomfited too. Good day, answered Defarge. Dryly. I was saying to Madame, with whom I had the pleasure of chatting when you entered, that they tell me there is in no wonder much sympathy and anger in Saint Antoine. No one has told me so, said Defarge, shaking his head. Having said it, he passed behind the little counter and stood with his hand on the back of his wife's chair, looking over that barrier at the person to whom they were both opposed, and whom either of them would have shot with the greatest satisfaction. The spy, well used to his business, did not change his unconscious attitude, but drained his little glass of cognac, took a sip of fresh water, and asked for another glass of cognac. Madame Defarge poured it out for him, shook to her knitting again, and hummed a little sun over it. You seem to know this quarter well. That is to say, better than I do, observed Defarge. Not at all, but I hope to know it better. Ha, Mother Defarge, the pleasure of conversing with you. Monsieur Defarge. We calls to me, pursued the spy. Indeed, said Defarge. With much indifference. Yes. Indeed. When Dr. Minette was released. You. His old domestic. Had the charge of him. I know. He was delivered to you. Such is the fact. Certainly, said Defarge. He had had it conveyed to him. In an accidental touch of his wife's elbow as she knitted and warbled. That he would do best to answer. But always with brevity. It was to you, said the spy. That his daughter came. And it was from Mirka that his daughter took him, accompanied by a neat barmister. Such is the fact, repeated Defarge. Very interesting remembrances, said the spy. I have known Dr. Minette and his daughter. He said Defarge. To be continued.